House Foreign Affairs Committee Chairman Michael McCall released the majority report on their three-year investigation into the Biden-Harris administration's disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan and the chaos and the inst instability that followed. The investigation revealed five primary conclusions, including how U.S. national security was degraded in the aftermath of withdrawal if Afghanistan has once again become a haven for terrorists. Joining me now to discuss this is U.S. Senator Kevin Kramer of North Dakota. He serves on the Senate Armed Services Committee. Senator Kramer, welcome back to Washington Watch. Good to see you. It's great to see you. Thanks, Tony, as always. You've been uh, outspoken on this. As a member of the Senate Armed Services Committee, you've watched uh, in disbelief what the administration did in the withdrawal from Afghanistan. Your thoughts on this report? Well, first of all, it wasn't surprising to me, but it was very well done. It's very thorough. It, as you know, interviewed lots of people from um, the military, former military leaders, as well as members of the uh, Biden administration. But remember, it was Robert Gates, the former, um, you know, Secretary of uh, Defense under Barack Obama, who said that for 40 years Joe Biden was wrong nearly every time when it came to to major major policies on foreign relations or or uh, national security, and he was certainly wrong on the Afghan withdrawal, not on the principle of getting out of Afghanistan. But the way he went about it, ignoring the Doha, uh, you know, conditions that the Taliban had agreed to with President Trump, um, you know, to ignore all that. But here's what, what bothers me the most from my perch on the Armed Services Committee, Tony, is that it really began the decline of America's reputation in the world. And we've never restored it. It's why every despot and dictator and communist leader in the world has felt compelled to, um, you know, to start wars and, and to attack our friends in Israel, to attack our friends in Ukraine, you know, to attack American military in the Red Sea and, and, and in, in Iraq. And, and that, that projection of weakness, that reputational harm that happened with the withdrawal of Afghanistan is exactly what we're, we're struggling with now, the consequences of that. I mean, if you, if you were to plot this out on a timeline, you see the withdrawal from Afghanistan, you see Russia making a move on Ukraine, you see Iran and its proxies moving on Israel, uh, you see the saber rattling with China. Uh, so th there clearly is a connection. I mean, you'd be hard pressed to try to defend this as being a decision, an action that was done in isolation with no other consequences involved. No question, Tony. Perfectly said. And 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 here's the other thing. That same message that goes to the to their our adversaries goes to our allies. If you're an ally of the United States and you see what we did to the non-combatant Afghans, you know, th their leadership was pleading with us to not do it the way J Joe Biden did it, as were our allies around the world, as were, by the way, the generals. I mean, General McKenzie was the CENTCOM commander at the time. He had all he could do to not just completely uh, verbally go against President Biden while he was still under his command. Um, so there, a lot of, there were a lot of signals, but the signals to our allies that we're not not a reliable leader, we're not a reliable partner, not a reliable friend. That also is, is an important message that's gone out to the world. And it's another reason why we need new leadership, frankly, in the White House. Senator Kramer, let me let me go back to the issue at hand with just Afghanistan, just focusing on yes. that, why we went into Afghanistan two decades ago because of the threat of terrorism. Yes. Now we see uh, the, the reports up to 10 terrorist training camps back in the region again. Uh, we've, we've had those that have been set free, actually uh, detained in our own country, who have come across our southern border. Yeah. Um, is the latter worse than the former? When, when yeah, we look it, at what it, the situation was 20 years ago and now what it is today, after we spilled American blood and spent American resources there in Afghanistan. So, Tony, it, this is a really important conversation that, that a, lo a lot of us have to have, even within our, among our, ourselves, right, with, within our own brains, uh, with fellow conservatives, what is the appropriate role? But the one thing I would say, um, you know, when you compare those 20 years ago to today and, and all the consequences, you know, withdrawing completely from the world is not the way the, the leader of the free world should do it. Nor can we be the policemen of every part of the world at the same time. We need each other. We need allies. Um, but we need to do it the right way. And I think to, to the point of, of a safe haven for terrorism 
to gather and to plan and to plan their next attack, even on, the, on, on our soil. We shouldn't forget that, that there are hot spots in, in the Middle East that require at least a watchful eye. Right now in Afghanistan, it's not just a matter of us not being present there. We don't have a great view of, the, of, of Afghanistan, what the Taliban is up to. And so um, somewhere there's a balance there, policy right. balance for sure, Tony. But uh, you raise really the, the fundamental point to Afghanistan. And that is, do we want to maintain a safe haven for terrorism, or do we want to, you know, have a have a relationship that's that's built on trust? Uh, Senator, I think you and I probably have share a very similar view on this. I, I I call myself a rational isolationist. I don't want to get involved in other people's fights. His proverb right. says, "Don't take a dog," you know, "Don't get involved in somebody else's business." It's like taking a dog by the ears. Um, and I don't think we need to get involved in those things unless it threatens American security. Right. And I do think there was justification initially for going into Afghanistan, but the purpose and the end objective, I, I think this idea of nation building yeah. was a failed idea and something we get, need to stay out of. I do think you're absolutely right. When America is threatened, we need to deal with it forcefully, swiftly, and decisively. Yeah. No, Tony, that's a great point. And the other thing we need to do is what you and I are doing. We need to talk about it. I think what happens too often is we go, we, we, we take on the enemy, we create a safety, you know, a safe place, if you will. And then we fail to talk to the American people, whether we're the, the commander in chief or the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff or, you know, key members of, of Congress. Uh, if we're going to stay in a country like Afghanistan or Iraq or other places, we need to be in constant, regular communication with the American people as to why we're there. What is the mission? Are we accomplishing anything? What's the exit plan? And I think our politicians for too long haven't been as communicative and as forthcoming as they ought to be. So it's a, it's a number of things. And you're right. The fundamental, though, standard ought to be, what's the threat to the American public? I'd much rather fight terrorists in the Middle East than, have, than fight them here on our homeland. But we better make the case. Uh, agreed. Uh, absolutely agree. I, I hope that this report will not only just expose what the Biden administration did in right. a disastrous pullout, but there were decisions prior to them that got us into Afghanistan and with, with no clear path forward. It was, you know, how do you get out of here? There was no plan to that. that obviously, that's disastrous. But I hope that we'll take the, this report in its totality and think through our next foreign policy move in terms of our military intervention. No, that's exactly right, Tony. It should inform all of us as policymakers, as administrators, as a military, but also our allies. And therein, I think, lies sometimes a bit of the problem. Too many times, America looks to be not necessarily going it alone, but carrying the, the bulk of the burden. And we do it a little bit too willingly sometimes, and we need to share this burden. One thing that we're seeing that's been clarified in the last few years, of course, is that there are friends and there are enemies. And then there are some frenemies. And it's important to know which ones are which, and then to work with our friends to make sure that we're making more friends and that we don't isolate ourselves. But because remember, our, our enemies are becoming allies with each other now. It right. used to be we could take these enemies on one at a time. That's no longer the case. So it's a much more complicated geopolitical situation. But at the end of the day, it still has to become about what's best for the United States of America and our citizens. Uh, Senator Kramer, final, final question for you. You sit on the Armed Services Committee. Is it not true that we would have less global intervention necessary if we had a strong military that was focused on its mission that would keep the enemies at bay because they know that we have lethal, decisive uh, leadership that is going to take them on if they cross a line. There's no question, Tony. You know, a lot of times the left will make fun of, of uh, Donald Trump because he somehow gets along well with, you know, Vladimir Putin or Kim Jong-un or, you know, name, name your, your, your despot. The reality is they, they respected him. They feared him. So they stayed in their lane. And the, the projection of power and the reputation of the United States is built on strength. Ronald Reagan, in my view, the greatest president of my lifetime, um, led by, by being strong. And the, the, the whole point of our military ought to be to deter our enemies. Uh, fight them if necessary, win for sure, but, but deter them from ever wanting to take us on. And we've, we've been taking a peace dividend for an awfully long time and been you know, not as focused as we ought to be on it. And uh, I just said we need to get back to that peace through strength 
uh, you know, aspect that Ronald Reagan was so good at, uh, it worked. at articulating. It, it worked. worked. It absolutely worked. My entire time in the Marine Corps, we had no foreign conflicts. So, I mean, it, it, it works. And I was in during the Reagan administration. Senator Kramer, always great to see you. Thanks so much for uh, joining us today. Always my pleasure. Thank you, Tony.